over the past four years, Jimmy Butler is the number one playoff player in the world. Past four years, tell me a player who's been more consistently great in the playoffs than Jimmy Butler. So, I, can't. I mean, four years ago, they get to the NBA Finals, right? He goes against LeBron. LeBron gets the edge, but they get there. Masterful performance. The next year, they get swept. By the eventual champs. By the eventual champs yeah. and Milwaukee Bucks. The next year, they get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Jimmy Butler puts the team on his back again. And this year, redeem story against a team that swept them two years ago. They beat the number one seed, and Jimmy goes for 56, and then last night goes for 42. And you call it a push-off. You call whatever. Yeah, it was. Catches the ball with offensive foul. I don't give a no, damn. It was it? Catches the ball with one hand, oh, it? gets it in. Yeah, crazy. To send the game into overtime. Wasn't I've never seen a player over the past four years have better playoff performances than Jimmy Butler. Wasn't Number a push-off at all. You know why? Because they didn't call it. Yeah, so it was a 100% offensive so, foul. So, but okay. so therefore, yeah. it wasn't because it, it was, was good and play. it went in. Yeah. Like you could argue it all day long. If you're a Bucks fan, you can scream and holler. If you're just an NBA fan, the bottom line is they didn't call it, and Jimmy Butler gets the credit for it. As Jay said, 42 points, eight boards. It just look at some of the stuff that he's been able to do. All we've heard is they don't have the roster. Where's Hero at? He's not there. Oh, uh, out of the bayou has to show up, as, as Perk would say, and do his job out because Jimmy bayou, Butler needs help. <laughs> and, and so, obviously, Jimmy Butler didn't need the help. He went out there and executed the way he knows how. He got his team to victory in overtime. And what else can you say? Now they just move on. Jay, now it's the mean, next round. Let me Kevin Love made some shot. Gabe Vincent made a huge three. Yeah, huge, huge yeah, three. Yeah, like yeah. Wesley, yeah. Wesley Matthews, please push up. Please, please don't backpedal. Can, can I get into something else, please? Yeah, by it's the like, way, they weren't pressing at all. But they everybody, got, though, they, Jay, key, backpedals. Key, key. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to say this, too. I'm coming in hot today. I'm swinging so hard on a multitude of levels. Um, when the Bucks won a championship, I was so critical on our show and get up of Coach Budenholzer and the schemes. I thought the schemes were crap. And I thought they won in spite of Coach Bud. And then that led to, well, you can't fire a coach. We had a conversation. Can you remember? I was like, can you actually fire the coach after you win a world championship? championship? Yeah. No. What, I, <laughs> so what I've seen throughout these playoffs have just been so bad. The arrogance or the cockiness. We're Why still in drop coverage. You're still in drop coverage, and Jimmy Butler after he gives you 56, you're putting Brooke Lopez on Bam in the last three minutes of the game, where Bam is just dribbling the ball at the top, passing the ball to everybody. You're not even putting pressure on him. You're not going small, putting Giannis on Bam. The last play in regulation, you're not putting Gian Giannis was on the ball. Regardless of them going small, you protect the rim. You're not playing two bigs in that situation and have Brooke Lopez, on, Brooke Lopez in the game and say, hey, look, regardless of who switches, switch everything, stay your butt down at the bottom and protect the rim. Don't give anything easy, right? Like you take a contested three. You protect the rim. I, 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 the, the decisions that Coach Budenhoser has made – are fireable offenses. Is that, they were is when they won well, the championship team, and they Jay. are now. He's saving his timeouts. Even the last possession, you have two timeouts. That's unreal. Grayson Allen looks like he doesn't know what the hell he's going to call a timeout. The play looks busted. Call a timeout. No, you don't want to call a timeout. He's using them for next year. He's saving yeah, them. Yeah, he's saving them. I'm now so, he's got I'm so two angry extra at it. timeouts. I'm so That's angry at it. I mean, it's just, it, it's fireable offenses, Key. Yeah, and I don't, you, I don't, I don't, I don't you, say that you, stuff lightly. Well, I don't call for people's jobs lightly at all. You you mentioned a championship and firing a coach, even though he won a championship, and you felt a certain way about the things that he was doing then, and you feel the same way about what he's doing now. Coaches don't change, Jay. You say, why aren't they doing Lopez in along with Giannis? Why aren't they doing this? Why are we still in drop coverage after the dude hit you for 56? He still come out and hit you for 42 because you're running the same scheme. They don't – they go – they – they do what they're comfortable doing and what they really know. That's why the great coaches, they know how to move stuff around and make adjustments. Eric so Spolstra. You, I, you took it right out of my mouth. You took it right out of my mouth. I was just about to say, Eric Spolstra. He's in the position he's in because he knows how to make those adjustments. 
And that's what you're looking at. Now, I know you don't want to literally call for the guy's job, or do you? <laughs> I, I, I feel you're like saying I'm what ready. you think should ought to happen. I, I don't, he's like not saying happen. that. He's just saying he's just saying that he's so mad I, that I'm if it was today. him, he would have to think about removing the guy. I mean, Jay not, asked him after not, they won the Jay's chip. You think you're not going to ask it now? Yeah, but Jay's not calling for his job. That's not what Jay's doing. I, I, he, he doesn't want to see a coach get fired. I'm sure. I, I don't want to see anybody get fired from their job, but – what I've seen has been atrocious. If you yeah. own the team, what it's would you do? Really bad. I, w- I would. I mean, who it are would my be candidates? Mad. I have to look at candidates. I have to look at legit candidates and see who is out there first, and then weigh those options. Can I get well, back well, to Jimmy? Hold on, guys. I want to get back to Jimmy that, Butler. Though, when a dude like, how could you do that when a dude like Giannis got hurt? Man, you can't just be picking on the coach. Giannis got hurt. He's coming back off injury. Jay, this you one can't. Game. You know, get get he missed two games. Two games. He missed two games, and he, and he went out, but they lost two games for the minute. Still sore. He missed two games, and he's still sore. I'm just trying to. I, I want to. I want you to slow it down from just. You know what I'm saying? But but, 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 key, yeah, but, 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 but I, I, okay, you're still in drop coverage. Why, I Key? You're asking me because to slow down. I, why? Because that's Jimmy what Butler I know. didn't slow down. But that's what I know as a coach. I'm comfortable in that. I'm comfortable in that. Giannis still gave you 40 and whatever, like he 25 gave you 30, 38 and 20. Yeah, but but Key, he missed 13 free throws. Yeah, that's really what decided the game but, but, to me. But he's always been a free throw problem. Right? No, he, no, not when they no, won. Remember no, not no, when, they, when no, they won a championship, say, he didn't miss a free throw. I was literally about to say, he's always been a free throw problem, except the year that they won. All of a sudden, he started hitting him, and, you know, that was pretty much it. But, but, but Key, Key all right, so Key. If if you're, I'm sorry, Max. I know you have a point. No, no, there. no. I think we should, we ought to be talking about Jimmy <laughs> Butler right now. But well, go ahead. We will. keep going. Uh, well, I'm just I'm getting my anger out. No, no, no. Go, go. So go, we go. can we can you know go. raise Jimmy Butler up. Um, if Drew Holiday, as the primary defender on Jimmy Butler, is allowing Jimmy Butler to shoot 53 percent from the field as a primary defender, Jimmy Butler went 30 of 57 from the field. Okay. Wouldn't you think about giving Jimmy Butler a variety of different looks, making him think? Because, Key, it's like when I played against Shaq, when we played against the Lakers, the first thing Bill Cartwright said to me was, Jay, Lakers are going to stay in drop coverage. You're going to get every shot you want off a pick and roll. My eyes were wide open because off every pick and roll, it didn't matter how Derek Fisher was guarding me, when Kobe switched on me, it didn't matter. Shaq was going to be waiting for me. Under the free throw line, and when I came off that screen at the top, now I got you on a yo-yo because now you're on my hip. I'm going to get shot after shot after shot after shot. I'm going to make read after read. It's a, it's the easiest game in the playbook, and that's what Jimmy Butler saw every possession key. After the game, Giannis was asked if he wanted to guard Jimmy Butler more. Here's the quote. Yes, out of respect, you got to let the coach make that adjustment. We have our best defender on him. There are conversations with Drew. Remember, this is how Jimmy Butler knew he could he could make the play at the end of the at the end of regulation to tie the game. There are conversations with Drew. Whenever he gets tired, I can take him. He's so competitive. He plays so hard. He wants to take the challenge. But at the end of the day, I wish I could guard him more. Well, that's that. That the good thing about that though is I always say, Jay, stay consistent. Giannis is consistent. He Giannis is. said, Giannis said this, uh, was it? A couple years played, ago. Yep, you're right. When they played the Nets. Yep. It was, was it the Nets he, that they played? Yep, or he wanted like to, we were asking him to guard KD. You're yeah, right. he's consistent with it. He's going to, the coach says, hey, this is what it is. I know we want him to do certain things, but again, Jay, the coach feels a certain way, and he's comfortable doing it that way. So, speaking of Giannis. <laughs> There's you so, guys don't so seem to, to want to talk Jimmy Butler. No, no, no. We, we're going to talk Jimmy Butler. No, no, no. You ignore Jimmy Butler all year and now continue to ignore the best playoff player in the world right now. But Giannis did have an interesting Is he answer. Than Michael Jordan? To Key, a don't, question. Key, why? Don't do that. Don't. <laughs> Key, can I ask you a quick question before Max? Interesting answer to a question about the, the season. Yes. At some point, did you ever tell the coach what you needed to happen? Come on, on man, the field? Max, go to break. Okay. He was asked at the post-game presser. Now, understand, they're the one seed. They, Vegas says they're the favorites to win. Most experts to start the playoffs are picking the Bucs to win the championship. They're going up against the Heat team without, at first, Tyler Hero, and then later, 
Oladipo. They, by the way, Giannis goes down. Uh, what if he misses? No, he misses two games. Now he's back. They're going to win, right? But yeah, they Jay. lose. They get gentlemen swept five games. So clearly, you would consider that a major disappointment. And many people would say a failure of a season. And Giannis was asked at the post-game presser if the season was a failure – Listen to the way Giannis responds to this question. You asked me the same question last year, Eric. Okay, uh, do you get do you get a promotion every year on your job? No, right. So every year you work is a failure. <laughs> yes or no? No. Every every year you work, you work towards something, towards a goal, right? Which is to get a promotion, to be able to uh, take care of your family, to be able I don't know. Um, provide the house for them or take care of your parents. You work towards a goal. It's not a failure. It's steps to success. You know, and if you've never, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to make it personal. So there's always steps to it. You know, um, Michael Jordan played 15 years, won six championship. The other nine years was a failure. That's what you're telling me. No, I'm asking you a question. Yes or no? Okay, exactly. So why are you asking me that question? It's a wrong question. There's no failure in sports. You know, there's good days, bad days. Some days, some days you are able to uh, be successful. Some days you're not. Some days it's your turn. Some days it's not your turn. And that's what sports is about. You don't always win. I mean, see, the thing, every time he opens Tech, his well, mouth, I like this dude right. more. Do you hear Giannis? You know, a lot of guys could sit up there and answer the question from the same point of view, but come across differently than Giannis. Giannis does not show any contempt for the person who asks the question. What he clearly tries to do there is explain, Jay, his point of view about things, which I think he articulated very well. And I think the underlying premise of what he says, I love how he says, take care of your family. He's not just talking about his kids. He says, take care of your parents, right? His mind is on the right kind of stuff. And what he says, what underlines it all is when you put in the work, when you try your best, it's not a failure. You know, even if you don't achieve the goal, you learn something and you come back and you try it again. I, I got to say, I love the answer. Uh, the answer was on point for me. I, I, I think Absolutely. It's, it, it's for a lot of people, it's how you're raised. And I think if you're a, a high school coach, a little league coach, that sound that you want to allow younger players to hear because key in my generation, it was win or bust. And it, it, it created a sense of urgency, absolutes like that, when people would say failures. Like um, when I was in college, if we didn't win it, we failed, right? So two out of the three years, we failed. But they were all steps towards us actually winning it and the growth process overall when you look at it in its entirety. That's how I'm allowed to frame it towards myself. But – it doesn't give permission to other people to call me a failure when I've actually won a chip because I've gone through the steps to do it. And I, I think for GA, Keith, that was so – the way he said that, it didn't come off as him attacking the reporter. No, 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 It came no, off no, no, as no, – no. you just try to understand how I see it and where I'm coming from. No, absolutely. I remember, Jay, I opened my restaurant in Beverly Hills. And first restaurant, soul food restaurant, African-American in Beverly Hills. And – Somebody asked me a similar question. It was like, oh, well, you know, you sold it. It closed down. Do you think it was successful? I said it was successful because just opening the doors is successful from, in my eyes. It was a success opening the door. Being able to go and get the permits and do this and do that and actually cutting the ribbon and turning out and opening up the doors and clicking the lights is success. And so when Giannis is talking about this from a basketball standpoint, first of all, he's already won an NBA title, Okay. To get to another one, as he said, Michael Jordan been to what fifteen? Play fifteen years, one six. Is it? Does that mean he's a failure because the other nine he didn't he didn't show up? He like, so I get exactly what he's saying, and I, hats off to to Giannis. Now, people will say, based on as Max said, the the sports books had you at the beginning of the year, the beginning of the playoffs to win the NBA title. People will say it was a failure because you didn't win it based on other people's views. But that's not – that doesn't mean that you failed. That just means that you didn't win a championship. It's and you come back next year and you run it back. This is it's a big – it's really talking about process versus result. I just had this conversation with someone I know well yesterday who has a big goal in their life and feels a little stuck at the moment but is pursuing the goal, right? 
the when people say they want to to you know live their dream or achieve their dream, the journey is the dream. Mm -hmm. That's the dream. So you win a championship. You think the dream is that moment, that that one second in time, and then you celebrate with champagne the next day. That's your whole life. Those twenty four hours of celebration, or you sit there and reflect on it for a week. That's the dream. No, the dream was the whole journey that you took. That was the dream, right? And that's, to me, that's what Giannis is saying. He's like, this is this work we're putting in, this journey we're on, that's all part of a larger success. And there, along those ways, there are little times where you come up short. It yeah. doesn't mean you have failed. And also, to me, Key, this just continues to prove to people how, how hard it is to win a damn championship. People... <laughs> say it so nonchalantly you know it, it's hard everything has to go right we talk about Tom Brady and the luck aspect right or Michael Jordan and LeBron and the luck aspect we're like oh you know luck is by what's your line about luck, luck is, is the residue, residue of design, of design. Right? Yeah. right but right. to a certain extent things need to go in your everything's favor you've got to fall your if ball got bounce your way, way. if Giannis That's doesn't get hurt in game one we may be having a completely different conversation today. But if Kawhi's ball doesn't drop, maybe the Sixers win the chip that year, if right? If Kawhi like, and Paul George aren't hurt, we may be having a different conversation about the this Clippers. This gets to something I've been wanting to say about Jimmy Butler. I, I thought of this analogy, Jay, because you were talking about kind of errors and how Jimmy Butler, since he's been on the Heat, you track those four years, finals. Mm-hmm. And Always on an undermanned team, by the way, okay. right? I, I don't need an NBA champion. I don't think you need an NBA championship to be the best playoff, playoff player, performer. So performer since he's been, well. so you say he's. Yes. I agree, but I you want, don't need a what, Jay? A, a, a championship. Well, people are saying, well, you, you can't be the, what? you can't be the number one playoff performer if you don't have an NBA championship, and I very much disagree with that, right? Because I think he's carried yeah. teams way further than anybody's expected him to do. Depends so. on the strength of your team, exactly. So, Here's the analogy, okay? When you have, in so certain eras, Michael Jordan or LeBron James, they are so much better than the next best guy. Like, through LeBron's prime, there was never like, huh, I wonder if this guy's as good as Le No, he was head over. Same thing with Jordan. It was Okay, you get a guy like that, when you give that guy a squad, it's a wrap. You know who's going to win. They got the squad. Now, that's kind of like boxing. Right, you have uh, when Muhammad Ali's in his prime, Mike Tyson was in his prime. You knew what was going to happen. That's actually less interesting than in other kinds of eras where, where you, you know, if Ali gets a little past his prime, and now Frazier and Foreman and Norton, these guys are coming up. Now you don't know who's going to win. Now it's really interesting when Mike Tyson's a little past his prime, and also now you have Holyfield and Lennox and all these guys. Much more interesting era. Now that LeBron has come back to the pack, he's still an elite player, but he's in that mix with other guys. And, and you have so many loaded teams with guys like that, right, where it's not clear. Now we have to analyze Jimmy Butler. It's like when Giannis said, just because I don't win the championship, it's not a failure. Let's analyze Butler for a second. He basically got, as a fighter, he got a title shot. Came up short, but he got the title shot, right? He's beaten some top 10 contenders in, the, in recent years. The question is going to be, Will history ultimately record him as a guy who finally won the championship as an NBA champion? That question is very much open. He is still performing it at a very high level, and he is showing right now that he has the ability to lead a group that really you look at, you go, they're not as good at past groups that going in, you think maybe they're not as good, right? Jimmy Butler is live basically every year in that conversation. And given the era and the fact that there is no LeBron James in his prime, he could do it. Eric Spolster says something last night, Key, uh, about Jimmy, where he said, you know, a lot of people in the NBA play basketball. But a lot of people don't always compete to win. And he said words like maniacal, psychotic, <laughs> Right, really defining who Jimmy Butler is. And if any, if you ever spent any time with Jimmy, Jimmy doesn't care who the hell you are. He doesn't care what accolades you bring to the table. It is you are in a street fight with him. It's no weapons, just your fist in the back dark alleyway. And ninety nine percent of the time, he's gonna be that dude that's gonna walk out on his own two feet. That's who Jimmy Butler is as a day-to-day -day individual. And we talked about it all last year, his story. 
like contextually, if you understand this dude, <laughs> you know, getting a, a letter of intent while working at like what McDonald's back in the day, right? Like he's always scraped and caught. Came in the league as a defensive stopper who couldn't score, and That's then it was like maybe is, get man. you twenty, I, and now it's like look at this dude. I got crow today, you know. I uh, respect. That's all I got to say. Respect to Jimmy and the and the Heat. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.